This is a very common power bank kit available on eBay. It comes without a lithium cell. And it's got a very distinctive shape. It's got this sort of book shape with a slightly curve in at this end and the, uh, the rounded sort of spine end. And it's got a solar panel on it. Two USB outlets, one marked 2.1 amp out and one amp out. Uh, micro USB in, a push button and an LED. Very typical of uh, the power banks. And a typical listing, I'm not sure, quite sure the listing I got this from. I couldn't find it. I bought this a while ago. Uh, but this one says 16,000 milliamp hour. Now, this is assuming you put in a 16,000 milliamp hour cell, if you can get one that fits in there. And this one uh, came from China, only cost £3.32. And I notice a lot of people selling them in the UK as well at £9 or higher for the same thing, but with ridiculous ratings like 10,000 milliamp hour, 100,000 milliamp hour, and they still don't come with a cell. So uh, when you open this up, I'll just uh, the initially when it's provi it's provided the solar panel is loose it's well I say loose it's kind of clipped in gently it, it's I'm seeing that now it's not going out oh there we go and I've already attached a couple of leads onto the solar panel the reason for that I wanted to test its output and to be honest it wasn't that impressive so let's uh, open this up this is the V end plate that once you've put it all together when you clip this in these latch, these little pins latch into the end here and that locks it all in place and stops it sliding out but before that it's a little drawer that slides out like this and when you put it together again when you slide it in these are the points that support the solar panel so you basically put a dab dab of glue on each corner I'm guessing and uh, you put your battery inside and one of the listings uh, the listing I bought it from did show a tiny little battery like that in fact I think it was a smaller battery uh, but it will accommodate quite chunky batteries, so it could theoretically have a decent capacity. I'm not sure what the capacity of this one is. One moment, I'm just going to check that. Let's uh, slide this out. 5,200 milliamp hour. I think that that's close to what the maximum you could fit in there. Okay, so the solar panel, let's get the solar panel sorted out here. I've got another little solar panel, and I've already put leads in it. Compare the two of them, they're quite similar size. This one's more spread out. If I get my wee dinky meter up and I stick it around 200 milliamps DC and I hook it up onto this uh, traditional solar panel because I have to say, if this solar panel was good that would be worth actually just buying that for completely, just the solar panel. So I hold this one up to the uh, light here and it shows about 30 milliamps, and that's just under a set of indoor light, so that's pretty good. The other one that came with it, while looking very smart with its nice matte and sort of laminated finish, if I do the same with it, it shows a current of approximately 12 milliamps. You think, well, that's okay. That's not bad. It's not great. It's about, it peaked at about 15 there. So you could say it's about half the output of the other one. But when it first arrived, it was peaking at one milliamp. And the only way I could get the current to increase was by firmly rubbing along the bonds here where the little uh, metal strip links all the cells together. So um, I don't think it's actually been put too well together. Um, so if you have one of these uh, and you've taken the solar panel out and you want to use it, you may have to uh, basically just rub your finger down the middle here where that black line is to try and get those bonds to make proper electrical connection, which doesn't really bode well for future operation. I'll just put the meter down. The circuit board in the carrier can unclip. If you bend the sides out, it just pops out. And it's got, let's uh, zoom down in this, it's got just one little 8-pin chip. The classic step-up inductor, LED, couple of sockets, and really there's not an awful lot else. On the other side, there are some LEDs. Now, I'm going to take a picture of this, uh, and then we can explore it in greater detail, so I'll be back in a moment. That's better. Let's explore. So what we have here is a chip called an SY3511D and it is quite a, one of those specialist chips. There's not much information about it. Uh, it's made by a company called ThinkPlus Semiconductor 
And the data sheet that I could find is in Chinese. And it wasn't it wasn't even a full PDF file or anything. It was just a few sheets of paper. One of them uh, just telling you the pinout, and one of them basically giving the data in Chinese and the actual schematic of how it's used. It's very, very simple. It does have four LEDs to indicate sort of like the charge status, and it has them sort of multiplexed by having two pins that either they go high state or they're high or low, so they can make either LED light. It's notable here that the two LEDs are actually in series across the battery. That's interesting, but of course the combined forward voltage isn't going to be exceeded even with standard red ones. You, oh, you know, it would be, it would be exceeded with red ones. They must be a colour that doesn't um, conduct, you know, uh, the combined voltage. If you exceed the combined voltage of the forward voltage of these LEDs, it would effectively drain the battery. But keep in mind that some LEDs, when they fail, uh, sort of start leaking current. So uh, they, these uh, LEDs could theoretically start draining the battery themselves if things went wrong. Anyway, it's got the four LEDs multiplexed on two pins. It has the uh, pin for the button, and it's got a 30, 30k resistor on the button, but that's also commoned up. That's to limit the current through the button because that pin also is used to light the LED itself. It's got a, it shows as a 33 ohm resistor in series with the LED. In reality, here's the LED 51 ohm resistor it's got in series with it. at the rest of this that looks like it's probably the 30 yeah 30 k resistor that's one in series the button there is a, a position for another chip here i know what that's for that's quite interesting we'll cover that in a moment the uh, circuitry here shows it's quite interesting it's a one ohm resistor in series one microfarad capacitor is a sort of filter across the usb in that's just to take any noise from the switching power supply to make the circuit more stable um, so the supply goes in and then everything is done the chip. It's got the um, charge circuitry. It, it connects via this pin here to the battery, but that's also used probably. Well, there's a switching pin there with another snubber network across it for the inductor. Um, and that boosts the voltage up, which is then put out through there so that the main current path is up at the top here. And that's more or less it. Let's uh, take a look at the circuit board and see how that compares. I can see there's a little snubber network across the inductor by the look of it. The battery, the battery connection is here. I think, uh, let's see, what's pin 2? Pin 2 it's just ground. No, it's it's just got a capacitor across. It's not got that little snubber network. Oh, no, that's I'm talking crap. That's the input. No, again, the input are just a capacitor. They've not used that little snubber. But they've got a capacitor across the input here and across the battery itself. The solar panel charges the battery directly via this diode. The negative of the solar panel is linked through this zero ohm link to the battery negative, and the positive of the solar panel, which is marked T, T plus and T minus, goes through this diode straight onto the battery plus, and it's obviously relying on internal protection. These type of batteries have a little protection chip in them, usually based on a DW01 MOSFET. And if the battery was being used wasn't fitted with that protection, it does have the facility over here to use, um, it's got the standard two resistors and a capacitor, and it's got the DW01 type position and a MOSFET position. So it does have that facility for protection, but when it's not used, when you're relying on the protection of the batteries, you put this zero ohm link in and it just shunts that protection circuitry. This chip up here is quite interesting because it's obviously one of the little ubiquitous 8-pin microcontrollers. And Although this button here is triggering this chip to turn the light on and off and also wake it up, it's also feeding a signal to this chip here, which then has one output that I can see. It's got another uh, another pin leading up there, unless that's power. Might be power, not sure. Um, but it's uh, got a pin that leads out over here, the track's all the way down here, uh, and then it's got a position for a transistor and a resistor. Actually, no, it's driving that directly there. 
Um, and then it's got the provision to actually put a really high power LED, say for instance a one watt LED or something, and to allow that to be driven directly from the battery, it's got a couple of resistors that go in parallel positions for them. So it's obviously designed, it's a universal board, it's designed to take the really high power searchlight type LEDs, as well as the, uh, the options for the battery type. But this is a, a very interesting solution, it's very, very compact. Now, the back of the circuit board has one, two, three, four, five LEDs. Four of those LEDs are along the edge and they're the sort of power level type ones. I wonder what that other one is, unless it's a... I wonder how they've actually connected that. I didn't really follow that through. Now I'm um, thinking, oh, there's a resistor there that bounces down to there, goes all the way down to, oh, it goes over to here. Oh, you know what? That's a, that is just, that LED is the solar power charging LED, the look of it. So when it's a, got input from the solar panel, that LED will light. And it does say in the instructions, it says that uh, it will, you know, flash warning for user when solar charging, even when no battery. So that LED is just basically powered directly by the solar panel via that fairly high value resistor. Uh, well, it's 1K. Yep, that's reasonable enough. The outputs, uh, if you're used to uh, the battery uh, out, the power banks that have the two USB ports, one is supposedly 2.1 amp, one is 1 amp, they usually have an arrangement where the 1 amp one just has the data pin shorted and the 2.1 amp has a, a resistor combination. They don't have that on this. They're basically, the two sockets are in parallel and both of them have their data pin shorted. So um, that's a bit cheeky. Okay, it's just basically two parallel outputs. So, what can I do now? I'm quite interested to actually test this. I'm quite interested in the idea, I'm going to stick the solder iron on, in fact. I'm going to connect a battery and I'm going to test it for it's uh, the charging current it takes in to charge that battery and also what it can actually put out, because I'm not expecting a lot. I think this chip is only rated, um, what does it say here? Uh, does it give any clues? It says one amp. I don't know if that's charging or if that's output, but I guess there's one way to find out. While I was looking for this data sheet, I did find someone referencing it and saying that uh, the output on their unit started off at one amp, but then rapidly dropped to a lower level as the chip heated up and it started thermally protecting. So I'm just going to pause momentarily and solder a battery onto this and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, that's the solder iron up to temperature. Let's uh, put some solder on the B minus. And the B plus, make sure I'm getting them in the right place here. I'm guessing for the switching the LED, it's just a tiny little MOSFET goes in there because I don't see any current limiting. I don't see a current limiting resistor, but it may also be relying on the uh, output resistance of the uh, little microcontroller that controls that. I'm guessing that probably means that it would also have flashing functions. Could be wrong. It looks like they've just tried to cover every possible option here. So since this is the longest lead, let's put it in the positive. Let's see if I can get the right way around so I don't produce voluminous quantities of smoke and dead electronics and suddenly end the video in a dramatic manner. Not that that actually does any harm. Okay. So now that's connected. Oh yeah, oh, the LEDs have lit up showing it's got quite a bit of charge. Okie dokie. Uh, I'm guessing is it long hold for the LED? Mm, double press, oh there we go. Double press turns the LED on and off. Okay, that's pretty interesting, quite neat. Right, so the voltage in these batteries at the moment, let's uh, Zoom out here, and let's focus to, let's uh, make sure I'm going to be focused in a good position here. Yeah, that's that's pretty, that looks pretty good. So let's uh, zoom out to an acceptable position. Let's check the voltage across these cells. So I've got the positive lead here. I'll just go into the little resistor pads there. It's about 3.7 volts. That uh, battery is half charged. Let's uh, get a USB lead, and I've got the uh, 
porta power tester here. So let's see what current it shows going in when I plug the charge lead in. So it's charging at about an amp. Point 0.9, well it started off quite high, uh, point 0.93, I'm guessing this little chip will be resistively limiting, it'll be acting as a sort of little linear regulator. So uh, as that heats up, it, the charge current may go down. Because it is creeping down steadily. It's going up and down like a yo-yo actually. Okay, right. So we tested that aspect of it. Now, let's uh, test its discharge current. So what do you reckon? What do you reckon this is going to be? Let's bring in a electronic load. And uh, we'll use the Unity tester for this one. I'll just plug it into any. It doesn't really matter where I plug it in. Let's plug it in the one closest to the uh, inductor. That's theoretically got a slight advantage in terms of track resistance. And it's displaying 5.13 volts. I'm going to plug this in. Let's zoom down on this and see if we can just nudge the focus there. I'm not sure if you're really seeing this. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's, uh, we're looking at the current here, so let's ramp it up and watch the voltage at the same time. So 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. It's holding pretty well. Uh, at one amp, it's oh, and it's just cut out. So let's try that again. Let's ramp it up to... 0.94, so that's 1.1 amp, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, the output voltage is down to 4 volts now, uh, so a run, I'd say this is going to be 1 amp total output, and because these uh, ports are just out in parallel, it, it is just literally 1 amp, so uh, it's an interesting little unit. The solar panel is just a little bit disappointing. It would have been nice if that had been a, a more generously rated solar panel. I don't know if it's just maybe rejects or just that particular way of making them, this laminating like the, them like that, because it seems very, very thin slivers. Uh, I mean, I know the, the layers of silicon isn't uh, very thick, but it just seems... I mean, it's very thin. It's about 1.5 millimetres, maybe about 16th of an inch-ish type thick. Uh, very thin indeed. It's quite smart, but uh, it just looks that bit more fragile. It doesn't feel as strong as a sort of resin-based ones where you get a big pool of resin on top. Noting this one is probably a reject because it's got a big bubble on top of it. But it still works very well, so that's it. Uh, I'm not too bothered about that one. The main thing is to note with these that uh, you have to use a battery with protection and these uh, phone batteries normally have a protection circuit built in anyway and you just basically, most of these batteries have the positive and negative marked one either end and you just solder onto these pads and then connect it to that and then the solar panel itself, if you used it, would connect to T- minus and T+. plus. So it's an interesting thing. It's quite neat. It's a nice case. It's maybe quite useful for the components. It's not that expensive. And it would at least let you repurpose some old batteries you had knocking about. But i um, not sure. I like the fact it's so versatile. I like that little tiny chip. The soldering on the sockets here, the USB sockets, is minimal. They've really just tinned them. So, um... If you were going to use one of these, I'd recommend reflowing not just the connections of the USB ports, but also the uh, anchoring pins, the negative set of pins that go onto the shell, the chassis pins. But other than that, uh, it's quite a smart little chip. It's quite a clever little chip for squeezing so much into such a small area. And the case is quite smart with its strange book-like appearance. It's very distinctive, uh, the fact it is shaped like that, with the sort of curved that side and then the curved out the way that side. And the fact that the drawer slides out and everything just clips in. So it makes it quite serviceable and modular. It has potential. But uh, just be careful when you're buying it that you, if you buy one of these, um, know that it has its limitations. And uh, 
Also, be aware that some people are charging far too much for it and quoting ridiculous figures when it doesn't even come in most instances with a battery inside. Or if it does, you just never know if they put one of these inside and maybe some weights or something to pack it up. But other than that, quite neat.